Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, and we are continuing the build of this 80 inch Deborah Sea View from a voyage to the bottom of the sea. Now, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about in terms of this build series, uh, it means you probably haven't watched chapters one through five. This is chapter six. Uh, if you want to see everything that we've done up to this point, you're going to need to go into my channel and find those videos. But uh, for those of you following along, Basically where we're at, we're trying to get the trim locked in. You remember where we left off at the end of the last chapter, things weren't looking awesome. So taking stock of where we are at right now, uh, I had ordered some large bilge keels and I'm gonna show you those here momentarily. Um, those came in, I've got them strapped to the boat. You can see some Velcro straps back here. That's holding these weights on temporarily. We just had the boat in the pool. Let's take a look and see how it did. All right, we are gonna put her back in the water. You can see she's dry. It's, it, of course, just started to rain, but at this point, I don't care. We're trying to see if it's gonna be stable. Now it's gonna list to starboard because the keel weight is on the one side of the GRP keel. I'm looking for stability. Let's see what happens. Well, adding that huge weight really didn't do much to the water line at all. And I kind of wish I could get that keel weight directly under the keel because I can't tell now. She really, really wants to correct herself, that's for sure. Seeing if the Velcro will stretch enough to get it right underneath. So the keel weight's on the port side right now, and when I tipped it over, I got some water in the ballast tank. So let's power this thing up. Oh, I didn't hook up the air intake. So it looks like the weight may need to go forward. Just slightly though. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right, tank is empty. You mean full? Empty of air. Oh. Yes, full of water. Really, really stable. A little bit forward. So I've got to get rid of a little bit of the foam that I have in there. But fortunately, this is really easy to get into now, thanks to my twist stud mod. So let's get rid of maybe half of this. And this time we'll hook up the hose, which is sitting in the shop. Well, that is just about perfect. It's drifting away though. All right, I'm gonna try and lift it up and get that air out of the ballast tank. And if I can. That looks awfully good. <laughs> what do you think? Looks pretty well perfect. I think that's got it. 
So looking at the uh, boat here, you can see the uh, Velcro straps. And uh, looking at the other side, you can see the weight, big brass weight. And I use brass because uh, it's got a high density and uh, a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to drill uh, and tap and do whatever we need to do to get it mounted to the bottom of the boat. Um, test went well. I think it's, it's about as perfect as it's going to get. That submerged trim was uh, like about as bang on as you could possibly hope for with the, uh, you know, the, the, the water basically just right here. You know, we could probably add just a little tiny bit more foam, um, up in, in here, but, um, we might just start with this where it's at and see how it does. So what we need to do now, um, take every, mark the position of the weight, take everything apart, uh, flip the boat over, cut the keel off just where the weight is going to go and then install the keel weights permanently. So that is what we're going to do. Okay, all of the grindy, grindy bit has been done. So now we need to permanently adhere this very heavy chunk of brass to this very heavy boat. So this is all ground off, cleaned up. It was interesting. There's a couple of bolts living in here uh, with some brass nuts. I don't know what that was all about, but interesting. You can see little areas that were all you know, modified by the previous owner. Uh, but this was just a, a fiberglass, uh, like a GRP keel. And you can see, you know, how it was laid up there. with a little indentation. So it wasn't solid, basically, is what I'm getting at. Um, so what I'm going to do, I got this all measured out. This is a full 36 inch by half inch by half inch bar of brass. Comes in about 2.6 pounds. It's going to sit up here like this so it'll look like the keel we're going to ferret in so that it looks nice i think uh you know from the side uh it'll look just like it was supposed to um it avoids the holes uh, i think it's going to work out really well but we don't want this falling off obviously so we're going to be drilling some holes and using some big stainless bolts and bolting it directly into the fiberglass roughing up the other side, using body filler, fusing it to the hull, contouring it all in. So between all of that, there should not be an excuse for that to be uh, damaged or, or broken or falling out. So time to drill some holes. Brass is drilled and uh, countersunk so that these uh, bolts will fit perfectly flush in there. And we've drilled and tapped the holes in the keel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a big nasty bead of uh, adhesive on there. And then you'll notice the bottom of this I've roughed up. This is really rough right now. I use the, the grinder on that. So uh, now that adhesive has lots of real estate to uh, grab onto for a really solid bind. So I think between the adhesive the bolts, and then ultimately the fillets and filling and all of that stuff. Uh, Taint no way this is coming off. This is the beginning mock-up of the 160th flying sub. Now, you guys remember this thing that I got off eBay, which is fine. It's fun, but uh, I don't need toys. So I took it all apart, saw how it worked. That was fun. But I salvaged these little brushed sealed motor pods. I think these are going to work really well. They propelled that other thing along um, really quickly. So these are, are sealed. What I like about them, I've got electronic speed controller that actually has dual motor uh, capability. So single ESC will handle both motors for differential thrust. Now, uh, a couple things to note. I've got a chunk of styrofoam in here. This is the mock-up for the one amp 2S battery that'll power this thing. And then I've got these um, motor pods, obviously, are already in there. And then I've got these brass 
thruster tube thingies. And uh, you'll notice, obviously, that they are canted outwards. Now, the reason for this is that the two thrusters in the back of the flying sub are actually very close together. So when they are aligned in parallel, there is a very small turning moment when you kick one or the other on. Some other people got away from that with, uh, with using forward-facing thrusters. That'll help spin it. This, obviously, when we can't the output, um, it uh, extends that moment arm from, if this is the center of the boat, from being maybe ah, 15, 18 millimeters to probably 40. So at least double the turning moment uh, on this boat, I think. So um, this hopefully will work really well, you know, left, right, um, both forward to go straight. And then I need to rig up a vertical thruster of some kind. I got to figure that out. Um, then I'll have the ESC and the receiver in here that I'm just going to waterproof. And uh, it's going to sit in the wet. So this is going to be a completely wet hull, no waterproof enclosure. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see how that all works out. So it's one of those like uh, two steps forward and five step back scenarios with uh, flying sub. Now, this looks good. Um, I think it looks good anyway. Uh, both of these motors run really, really well. They're shrouded, uh, you know, ducted into here. They're nozzled down. They come out the back. It looks super cool, I think. Uh, and then I was like, oh, you know, how am I going to do the vertical thruster? I'm like, oh, let me just put it together and see how it works. And this is all good. And then this happened. Yep. Uh, this is what happens when you rush. We have interference issues. And now this uh, is completely wrong. I'm going to need to hope that I can break these out without breaking the lower hull. Uh, not confident that that's going to end up happening, but uh, we can try. Oh, it worked. On one side. Mm. Oh. I was trying to get this out without snapping these wires because they are very, very fragile and they are also glued down to the lower hull. So now I get to start over from scratch, which is highly exciting. Uh, had some thoughts though about the vertical thruster. So um, if you guys are familiar with uh, the Robosh bow thrusters, they use a paddle and uh, my thought was I was going to use this motor here and try and create a waterproof enclosure for it with a paddle that would go into a central shaft that ran vertically uh, and it would uh, paddle up and down uh, as a bow thruster to push things up and down. And the idea behind this, by the way, is that uh, this craft will basically be able to vertically and uh, ascend and descend uh, without changes of pitch because we want to be able to launch it from the flying sub bay like that, not like this kind of thing. This is a lot to pack into this little tiny thing. And, and uh, I mean, I know it's possible, but um, it takes a lot of thought and engineering and working out. And this was just supposed to be like a little peripheral thing that was super cool, not a full-fledged project all on its own. But let me clean this up, resituate things, and see if we can make it work. So this is the new keel. Uh, you can see the old profile is basically triangular or, or trapezoidal, roughly. Uh, and then we've got a, a square keel, uh, half inch by half inch brass stock that's all been fared in. Um, it looks good. You know, honestly, unless you were a Sea uh, View aficionado, I really don't think you would be able to tell that anything was modified. Certainly, it was better than the gigantic holes and scoops and kind of uh, more unique things that were part of this boat earlier on. 
Um, I've just got to do uh, one last skim coat, uh, you know, some glazing putty, fill this up and uh, hit it with some sand, uh, fine sandpaper. This is all just rough right now, but you get the general idea about how that's going to look. Um, once we get that all done, we can flip it over, do final function test, and then we are going to be looking at get it back in the pool and doing a full dive test um, with the new keel uh, in place and centered on the boat. So I have been spending my time while the rain comes down outside prepping the sea view for her next dunk in the top secret test tank. Um, I want to show you some modifications that I did to the forward box uh, that'll just make life a little easier for everybody when it comes to uh, maintaining and operating the boat. So this is, uh, as you've already seen, the forward control box that houses uh, all of the guts and gizmos uh, that don't take to water very well. Um, that hasn't changed. A couple things that I did though, and this is really standard. If you use Velcro to hold your watertight cylinders down, you know how frustrating it is to uh, fish that Velcro out, put the cylinder down, and then put that over top, especially when they get wet, they curl and they fall underneath. What I did is I put a couple magnets on the inside. So now it just flicks up and it keeps uh, completely out of the way on both sides. So actually when you, when you undo it and just let go, it just snaps up like an automated stowage system for the uh, straps. Now, the other thing that I did, um, because in between every run, it is imperative to open the box. Now, it's not that big of a deal to undo the connections in the back, although you can see there's a lot of servo connections and power connections and uh, servo or solenoid connections and motor connections in the back. It would take a couple of minutes. Um, I want to make it a little easier. So uh, what I went ahead and did is I put these little brass extensions on the uh, on the latches. So now if you uh, pull those back, and I'm trying to do that one handed, which is kind of fun sometimes. Now you got access to the box. You can open it up, vent it, check for water, make sure that nothing is going on inside. Um, you know, if something easy needs to be checked. You can get in there now. Uh, you can't open it all the way, but it's still much better than nothing. And, and you do have really good access, um, you know, to uh, to get to most of the components. Any obvious major repairs or swaps or upgrades, you're going to want to pop it out. But that literally just takes a few minutes. So um, that can just literally get put back down. I'm going to get the latches out of the way. And it, this does take two. You got to get your fingers underneath and then snap. The latch is down, and then it's all uh, all done. Well, we are going to pack it in for the day. Seaview is fully prepped, ready to go. It's interesting. As I was doing that, noticed a couple of things. Number one, the servo in the fair water in the in the sail was actually loose. I had to tighten that. I don't know how that ended up happening. And number two, the uh, hose for the air pump was kinked, so it was getting no air through there. So that's why you do pre-mission checks, even if you're just uh, testing it in the pool. So that should be all set to go. Weather's supposed to be better tomorrow. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, you can see the boat is in the water and it is still listening to starboard. Now I'm not too worked up about it right now because what we found yesterday was after we cycled the ballast, for whatever reason, everything started working better. So I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the ballast and we'll see what it does. In theory, it's going to get better and better as it comes down. It's going down nice and level. That is perfect. Like, utterly perfect. That's enough. Alright, I'm just going to, I got to play. I just got to play a little bit.
All right, let's see if I can spin it around. So I want this one forward and this one backwards. Look at that. It turns slowly. It takes it takes some uh, practice. I'm gonna bring it up. Well, now it's kind of straightening out. Is it level now? Almost. It's probably like five, ten degrees off. So I, I wonder if it's the water in the ballast tank kind of sloshing off on one side. So when it's in transition, it's really unstable. The trim is absolutely dead on perfect. So, uh, despite kind of a rocky start, I think we've got it nailed down. Let me take a look at what we're facing right now. So, what I went ahead and did, added some foam to the starboard manta fin underneath there, and uh, added some weight in the front to offset it because we were basically just about perfect. I also added some additional flotation in the sail and now it's actually perfectly vertical and um, really stable. The issue is when it's in transition from surfaced to submerged. So for that one minute, it likes to lean. I don't know that we're going to be able to get away from that um without some sort of active roll stabilization um and quite frankly i'm not going to worry about it i think this is going to work out just fine i'm going to permanently adhere the foam and the weight and the other foam and um, then we're going to have it back in the water for a final and then we're going to get on to paint and uh get this thing out to an open body of water where we can really open it up. But uh, again, just note the water line about two thirds of the way down the window in the front and uh, then almost all of the Cadillac fins in the back. So uh, it's looking really, really good right now. I'm really happy with this. I never thought we'd get this thing floating like this. And, and the submerged trim is, is like astoundingly good. So back to the shop, get her buttoned up one more time in the pool just to double check it. And uh, we're going to go. So happy with the way that uh, the boat finally trimmed out. The, the only downside to getting this thing way up out of the water is this transitionary period between the full surface trim full submerged trim. It's not major. And honestly, I think it'll probably stabilize, particularly if you were moving at the time and not doing a full static dive. So now uh, we're on to some cosmetic stuff. We're going to uh, pull out the command bridge, uh, throw some paint on here, do some primer, make sure we got no scratches and uh, start making this thing look like a boat. So we got Sea View prepped for uh, primer and paint. Got her flipped upside down. I've taken the uh, interior out. So she's all hollow inside once again. Um, got our, our bay doors in place. We've masked off our floodlights. Sanded uh, the hull except for the areas that are just filling a, a few little pinholes and stuff. This should all be cured up. Actually, this is feeling really good. Probably another... 20 minutes or something like that. It'll be sandable. Um, I'll get that all sanded and then I'll fully prime the lower hull, let that dry, flip it over and move on to upper hull, making sure that everything looks really good. And then we're going to be throwing paint 
on this thing, which is super exciting. This is where we are going to uh, end the day. Uh, sea View has been primed, and uh, I think we're just going to keep it gray, uh, green, uh, add some camouflage, and a uh, tank barrel on the top. No, no, we're not going to do that. Um, it'll be gray, but uh, this is primed in self-etching primer, um, not just because... We have lots of it, but because this actually sands beautifully, fills nicely, and all of the brass parts that I have on here, um, the etching primer eats into the into the actual metal and makes it so they don't get uh, paint chipped off as easily. So the other thing I did here, just so that you can see all these lights, I put dabs of silicone on top of them. So uh, after we're finished painting, we just pick, pick off the silicone and we'll have all our lights ready to go. And then on the back, uh, where we have these incandescents, we put some uh, little heat shrink tubes over there to protect them. So uh, primer, obviously, a couple reasons you want to prime before you paint, uh, and that is for superior paint adherence to the boat, uh, and then also in these intermediate stages to identify any paint blemishes, which you can see like a little tiny one right here. Uh, let me do a little glazing putty. Actually, maybe I'll put some on there. So it has a really good chance to dry. Um, so yeah, uh, this is gonna be painted next week. Uh, should be quick, two colors, well, three colors. Gray, gray on the top, white on the bottom. And then I think we're gonna do like that military seafoam green in the bridge area and the, the recesses up here, just for some visual interest, just so everything's just not gray up there. But uh, yeah, it's looking really good. I'm excited. Trimming went really well. So, um, you know, if we can get it painted, then uh, it's going to be in the water soon. So this is where we are going to end off of this chapter of the Sea View Build blog. I hope you are enjoying it. Uh, if you do, please do like and subscribe. Helps us out here a lot. Um, next chapter, we're on to paint. Uh, and then Maiden Voyage, uh, getting real close. I am excited. Uh, on behalf of myself, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video series. Be sure to check out all my other videos. Got lots of RC submarine awesomeness going on. And if you like RC submarines, consider joining my dive tribe. Uh, links at the top of my website. We talk about RC submarines in a video meeting every two weeks. We have a blast. So with that, I'm going to leave you be. Have a great rest of your day and catch you next time.